Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation with complex numbers and i. So i, hopefully you do know what it is, but if not, then i is the number whose square equals negative 1. In other words, i squared is negative 1 in the simplest form. That's how it's defined. But we can also talk about i being the square root of negative 1. But complex numbers have two square roots, except for 0, of course. Then we can say it's one of the square roots of negative 1. Okay, so it's not always very accurate to say i is equal to negative 1. It's just one of the uh, square roots. Okay, what is the other one? You think about it. And if you're new to complex numbers, then you can go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist where I kind of go over the basics of complex numbers. Okay, great. So this is a nice problem. And I kind of thought about maybe giving you something like i to the power z equals 1 or negative 1 or something like that, right? So, but then I thought about it, like, why don't we make it a little bit more interesting by including the reciprocal of i to the power z, which is what we have, because this is going to turn into something nicer. So let's go ahead and see how this unfolds. I'm going to go ahead and write the i to the power negative z as 1 over i to the power z. You can also think of it as multiplying both sides by i to the power z, which is probably easier if you do that. And let me show my work here. So i to the z multiplied on both sides gives me i to the z on the right hand side. And when I distribute, this gives me i to the power 2z. This is kind of faster than making a common denominator plus i to the power 0, which should be 1, right? All the time. And that's equal to i to the power z. Nice. Well, this kind of looks like a simple equation, doesn't it? But uh, it's going to bring us some interesting uh, topics to discuss. So let's go ahead and bring this i to the power z to the left hand side. And then this is going to be our equation. What do you think at this point? What should we do? If you set substitution, you're on the right track. Because this is an equation that could be turned into a quadratic, right? Quadratic equations are either easy to solve by either by factoring or by completing the square, which is the quadratic formula. Either way, they are easy to solve. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace i to the power z with something. How about w, which is another variable that we use on this channel frequently. By the way, I have another channel called CyberMath. If you haven't checked it out, go ahead and check it out. I post uh, videos on different topics. If you have any suggestions, also feel free to let me know under this video or any other comment section. So if this is w, then this becomes i to the z to the second. But one of the questions that we should always discuss is, is i to the 2z always i to the z to the second, right? Or in other words, if you have something like a complex number u, u to the z to the w, is this always u to the z w? Or what are some of the conditions for which this is true, right? Because Something that applies to real numbers does not always apply to complex numbers because it's a complex word out there, right? So anyways, in this case, let's assume that it works. And now our equation becomes, because i to the z is w, w squared minus w plus 1 equals 0. Great. Now, we have a quadratic equation which should be fairly easy to solve. This is not easily factorable, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula says negative b1 plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Square root of negative 3 can be written as root 3i. And then we're going to divide it by 2a, which is 2. Great. So the formula gave me two solutions with a plus minus sign, but non-real solutions, of course. This channel is all about complex numbers. That's why the solutions will be complex. Okay? Well, real numbers are complex too, by the way, but let's call them real numbers, shall we? So, we have two solutions, and what are we going to do with these? We're going to back substitute. Because w is not the end goal, we know that w is i to the z. So, let's go ahead and split it up into two solutions, w1 and w2, and let's set each one equal to, for example, let's start with this, the plus sign, the more positive one, and set it equal to i to the power z. So if i to the power z is equal to this, how am I going to solve for z? Well, this is exponential, but 
it's a complex exponential. So it's a kind of, we need to talk about complex exponentiation, which you can kind of write as, so i to the z can be written as e, which is Euler's number, thanks to Euler, he gave us a lot of good formulas and rules that we can use, amazing identities. We can write this as e to the power z ln i. Make sense? Okay, when you raise i to the power z, ln e to the power ln x becomes x, so on and so forth. But we shouldn't do it on one side, we should do it on both sides. Okay, what about this? This number is complex and can be written in polar form. Again, you can refer to the lecture videos if you're new to complex numbers and the polar form. But this can basically be written as follows. When you graph this on the argon plane, 1 half and root 3 over 2, is going to look like this. And you can also think about this number being on the unit circle because it's modulus, which is its distance from zero. And you can think of this complex number as a vector, right? This is the real part. This is the imaginary part. What you're seeing is called the Argand plane. And on this plane, basically, we have a number whose modulus is one. Great. And the angle it makes, because this is one half, this is root three over two, real and imaginary parts, you get the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So in other words, this is 60 degrees, which you can write as pi over three radians, right? So I can basically write the right-hand side as e to the power i theta, where theta is the argument, and in this case, that will be pi over three. Make sense? So far, so good? Okay, looks like we got a solution, well, almost. But one thing to remember, if I go ahead and take this vector and rotate it, 180 plus 180, 360 degrees or 2 pi radians, I get to the same point. So there are multiple values for this representation in angles. In other words, we kind of need to add multiples of 2 pi to this where n is an integer to express the whole thing in general. But if n is equal to 0, you get the principal value. Make sense? So that kind of covers everything. And from here, we get the following. Z L and I equals e to the power, oops, there's no e, i times pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. So here's your next challenge. Write ln i. What is ln i? So let me give you a formula for the uh, natural log of a complex number. ln z can be written as ln absolute value of z plus i times the argument of z. And in this case, we don't know the argument of z, do we? Well, we do because z is i. By the way, I should probably use a different letter because um, you know what? It, the z, this z is not the same as our z. <laughs> it's a different z, okay? So let's go ahead and change the variables here real quick. This should be argument of u and we should be good. Okay, cool. So now what you need is replace u with i and absolute value of i is 1. So ln 1 is 0. This is a real value logarithm. So you end up with this. And the argument of i, what is the argument of i on the argon plane? It's basically pi over 2. You see that? We use the polar uh, coordinates a lot or the polar form. In this case, the argument of u would be pi over 2. So ln i could be replaced with i pi over 2. But the problem with that is we still have to consider all possibilities because ln i is multi-valued. So let me do this. Instead of writing just i, oops, instead of just writing uh, it as i pi over 2, let me write it as i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Let's use the general form and then we can kind of replace uh, k with 0 if we want the principal value. Make sense? Okay, great. I'm just going to show you one of the solutions because the second one is fairly uh, similar. Now notice that i cancels out, it's not zero, and from here we get our z value. And if you write the z here, it's going to look like this. Pi over 3 plus 2 pi n divided by pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Do you think we can find a simple, simple solution? First of all, consider the fact that n or k can be zero. Is there anything against that? No, I don't think so. I think they can both be zero, so let's go ahead and go with the easier route. We already found the general solution. And now what happens if you replace n and k both with 0? Then you get something like z equals pi over 3 divided by pi over 2. And what happens here is the pi cancels out, leaving us with 1 third divided by 1 half, which is 2 thirds. 
So z equals two thirds is a solution. Are you serious? Well, if you think about it, i to the power z plus i to the power negative z, and I hope I didn't make any mistakes because the i canceled out, right? Hopefully we didn't. Well, ln i is a multiple of i anyways, right? So that should always work. I believe it's correct. Anyways, you can go ahead and plug this in and see if you're going to be able to get one from here. And the other solution is just going to be uh, the other argument uh, or angle which you can pick, or I should say the 1 minus root 3i over 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.